Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the heavily anticipated Brian Brown Jaeger M, and this is a V2. Here's the card right here with all of the information. This is a production version of a knife that, you know, originally was a custom. Actually, I think it originated as a fixed blade. Uh, thank you so much to the gentleman who loaned this to me for review. This will go back to that gentleman when I am done with it. Uh, to the gentleman who sent it to me, please send me an email at metalcomplex87 at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Um, there's also this card here that you guys can uh, take a look at and scan if you want to. Make sure you guys check out Brian Brown Knives. Um, this is a cool knife. I, I like it. Um, I gotta say, uh, when I <laughs> unboxed it, <laughs> something funny happened. So, um, I had not, I wasn't aware of this. Um, I, uh, I handle a lot of stuff. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the knife world, so it's impossible to be on top of everything, but I had not, I wasn't aware of this knife. Um, there are different variants of it. There's like a Knife Joy exclusive. There's like a collector's group exclusive. They did variants of them in Zerka Thai or Timascus or something like that. This is a pretty plain Jane one. I also found, found a super plain Jane one on Knife Center. Um, they're expensive knives. They're premium knives, right? It's a, it's a Riat made premium knife. Um, but it's, a, it's, it's definitely a cool knife. Um, when I unboxed it, uh, I was like, yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't know that this was a thing. And there were a couple of people, like more than one person who were like, how dare you? This is the most anticipated knife of 2022. I question your involvement in the knife community as a serious knife enthusiast. And uh, I thought they were joking. <laughs> Turns out they weren't. Uh, this was, uh, you know, I was like, well, maybe this is something special. So, um, yeah, watch and find out. I've got uh, a few things to say here. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. Uh, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a uh, measurement of the Brian Brown Jaeger M overall length. Coming in at seven and a half inches. Blade length is coming in at about three and a quarter. And your blade length, or your, I'm sorry, your cutting edge length coming in at three inches. Let's do some size comparisons. Just a few up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here, it's a shorter full-size knife, but I'd still call it a full-size knife. Up against the Demco AD 20.5, we are looking at a nearly identical overall length. Uh, how about up against the Spyderco Para 3? There we go. And last but not least, the Benchmade Bug Out. All righty. So how's the action on this guy? The action is very good. It is very typical of Riot production knives. I have never handled a, uh, a, a Brian Brown Jaeger Custom. I do like the sound that it makes off the flip. It's kind of... I said something about throwing something into a pile of pennies. It has that metallic, right? but there's a little bit more kind of a ching, right? I'm, I'm not really sure what it is, but it, it's satisfying. Um, off the uh, the release here, it's very close to a double clutch, but not as long as you catch it on that flipper tab, right? Just a little bit, kind of have to go off to the side. No double clutch there. Uh, and then you can absolutely deploy it using the rectangle, which is a nice thing that we see periodically on knives like this. The flipper tab is shaped in a way that it uh, allows for a satisfying deployment. It doesn't feel like any, any of the energy is wasted trying to find the right spot on the flipper tab. So yeah, the action's good. It's par for the course for Ria. How about carry profile? Thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. There we go. Um, it's a little thicker than the Spyderco Para 3, but not anything insane. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. We are looking at a knife that is honestly almost exact. It's, yeah, it's almost exactly the same length as the Para 3 in terms of height, maximum height, even like down here. Looking at it in the middle, right? It's it's getting there, but it's not quite as tall. So really, if you have an issue with it in the pocket, it's probably going to be due to either dimensions or weight. 
Um, let's take a look at the inside here real quick. There is a little bit of milling for weight reduction, which is good because the titanium is fairly thick. I put new batteries in my scale finally, so now everybody can actually see. We should probably change the unit to ounces. There we go. 4.34 ounces, so not perfect ratios, but it's not necessarily a heavyweight item. I would still call this, you know, a reasonable carry item. The balance is about right behind the pivot. It's honestly pretty good, right? It doesn't feel ultra heavy or bulky. It just kind of feels like a kind of a square-ish, like a soft rectangle that is fairly compact and easy to, right? If you're wearing wind paper, what's wind paper? <laughs> wax paper pants, um, then probably not, right? If you wear regular pants, then you should be good to go. Let's measure blade stock thickness. Guys, look at this. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I put new batteries in it, finally, right? Oh my God, it's been, it's been like two years, Complex. The poor thing was running on the same battery. Blade stock thickness is coming in, curiously, at 157 thousandths. Um, okay, it's thicker than we normally see, in the knife world, but then again, it's Riot, right? And the grind on this thing, the, the actual geometry of the blade is another story. But um, yeah, thicker than I would have expected, but not, not anything absolutely insane. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm gonna get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Did I mix up my T8 and my T10? I think I did. Wow, look how much of a different color that T8 is than all of the other. <laughs> You can tell which one I'm always pulling out of there. Okay, um, yeah, I believe the pivot is going to be a T8, and then all of the body screws, everything, even the pocket clip screws are also T8, which is great, and it's just too precise um, that you need to, you know, disassemble it. I mean, you probably, do you need to take off the pocket clip screws? No, it doesn't actually look like you need to. That's nice, minimal hardware, really simple construction. That's good, I appreciate that. Okay, do we need to do anything else here? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes. So um, this is a cool looking knife. It's uh, not an aesthetic that I have never seen before. I've certainly seen the blade, uh, you know, variations. I'm not saying it's copying anything directly. It's doing its own thing, but uh, we have a uh, sort of Warncliffe, like cleavery style blade. Um, and then we have a fairly simple handle profile that looks good. Everything flows together. It looks nice. Edges are nicely chamfered down. The titanium looks good. I will, um, you know, say that I, I like the wide pivot collar. A lot of times, uh, companies who do the pivot collar, they just do it so thin so that whether it's anodized or it's something special like zirconium or zircotai or something like that, you can't really tell. On this knife, you can tell. I kind of like that. You can get a plain Jane one or there was a plain Jane one available that was just the silver or satin finished pivot collar. Um, but I, I like this. The wider pivot collar allows for, you know, everything to look, you get that contrast, right? Because otherwise the scale is very boring. It is just a flat titanium scale, which the more I see, the more I'm getting very tired of. Um, texturing or inlay, something like that. And people are gonna shout out, they did, they did an inlay version, yeah. I saw, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm wrong. I saw a version of this on eBay, which by the way, jeez, oh, the eBay prices on this are <laughs> hilarious. Um, the uh, There was an, a rich light version. Hmm, interesting. Do they do a micarta version too? The, I like the inlay versions, definitely. I think that this, maybe this plain titanium one was yet another missed opportunity, not just by Riyadh or Brian Brown, but we see this all the time. Just the flat look, and maybe people are just really into the same copy and paste minimalist look. I'm not saying this is a copy and paste design. I'm just saying the plain flat titanium scale is kind of a, wow, neat. So it's stonewashed? Excellent, that is, uh, that is what we see. Um, I would have liked to see a, a pattern or something on there. You know, I mean, this is an expensive knife, even the base version. It would have been nice to see something a little different. But you know what? In this form, to be fair, it's fine. It's nice. It's finished well. It's Riot, right? Ergonomics are okay. Uh, there's a little bit of a choke up position up here, and it's eh, it's kind of like they did they they did the halvesy thing on the the forward choil, right? But it's okay. Access to the liner, or I'm sorry, the frame lock is good. Um, the actual you know holding on to it is a little bit. It's like, do I put both fingers in here, or is this meant for one finger? And should I dangle my pinky off the edge? I'm not really sure. It depends on the size of your hand, right? My hands, they're it's okay. 
Uh, I'd give it a B on ergonomics. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but it's not uncomfortable. I mean, I, I am thankful that they did a 3D milled clip with a nice contoured top and the edges are all nicely knocked down. Um, so yeah, it's okay. Um, it's got a satin finished blade. I think we had a few different options for the blade. Uh, this blade is, so it, it looks cool. It looks good with the design, but it's, uh, it's a blade shape that we have seen before many, many times in the last, I don't know how many years. Um, I do appreciate the little rectangle opening hole that goes along with the blade. That's kind of nice, right? Get, being able to do the reverse flicks really, really cool. It's a fairly fidgety knife. There's a flat that runs out about 85% the length of the blade. I do like the swedge up here. This looks good. The best part about the blade um, is actually how thin the cutting edge is. Look how this tapers. Oh my God. This is a laser beam. This is a, I try to re reserve that term for when it really is a laser beam. This is a thin blade and it will slice and cut, do your draw cuts, right? This is a nice day-to-day -day blade. It's not, you know, again, it's not a unique like, wow, no one's ever done that. The rectangle, right? Um, but it is ground very thin uh, and it, it gets impressively thin down here considering where we start is 155 to 160 thousandths or so. Um, that's pretty cool. I, I do like that. It's all finished really well. Something else I really appreciate is that we kept everything off the blade. No logos, no billboarding, nothing. This is an M390 blade. And I think you know how thin the cutting edge gets. It does accentuate M390 pretty well. We're gonna have a nice thin edge that's gonna keep that razor sharpness for a long time, as long as you're not trying to cut something stupid like rebar, right? Not trying to prove yourself, right? I cut a piano in half with my Jaeger. It was dull, but I cut a piano in half. <laughs> wow, congratulations. Um, but yeah, uh, it's cool. I like that. I, I think I would have preferred a tumbled finish. I'm, I'm kind of sick of the, the satin finish, but Riyadh does a good satin finish. And if you like the satin finish, then there you go, right? That's a uh, matter of preference. Moving on here, seating of the hardware, everything's perfect. Riyadh, just flawless execution. Uh, not a lot of complexity going on here, but really nice execution. Um, the backspacer I like. I like how everything else about the knife is very blocky, and then the backspacer is uh, radiused up on top. That's nice. It's a nice little touch. I appreciate that. The versions of this knife that came out in the Mocha tire, the Zerk tire, whatever, they look really cool. I like the the accents. The backspacer looks nice. The pocket clip looked nice. The pivot collar looked nice, right? Um, oh, you know, truthfully, like every version of this knife that is not the basic one looked a little bit better, but you had to pay a lot more money for it. I don't know what the prices went up to. I know the base price, um, but I, I know that they, you know, they went up. He does have his logo right here in the relief cut, and I think that looks really good. Uh, I appreciate that. Guys, oh no, there's no lanyard hole. Um, anyways, moving on here, we have a pocket clip that is mounted in, uh, in a way that allows for kind of a medium carry depth. And I think that's fine. Um, doesn't have to be deep to be good. Uh, the pocket clip, it, it is, um, kind of doing its own thing, right? It's not offensive visually or anything like that. It's a nice clip. I appreciate that it is 3D milled and not just a stamped out clip. Uh, I appreciate that there is a, uh, ramp. Uh, underneath here so that we don't have, come on, here's the knife camera. It's right here. Uh, we don't have something going like this, right? We have more of this, which is nice. It's easy in and out of the pocket. It just is going its own direction and it's its own shape. Um, but it, it looks fine, right? I don't have a problem with that. Functionally, it's, it's great. Um, I just, I don't have a problem with the clip. There is a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over treble stop. There is a stop pin located in, in semi-traditional position with very deep shouldering. This runs on bearings, has completely and totally solid lockup, no lock stick, no pivot lash whatsoever, and a nice, consistent, smooth action that drops into the closed position with a little click right there. Very good, no pivot lash. Did I mention that? Um, so yeah, um, this is a nice knife. Let me say this. 400 bucks from Riot, executed properly, uh, reasonable ergonomics, good clip, um, good overall aesthetic, good cutting edge, good geometry. It's a good functional knife. Um, I, you know, 
I think anybody who picked this up for the base price, you did pretty good. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not uh, ultra familiar with Brian Brown knives, and I think that's why so many people were just like, what? How did you not know? This is so important, right? Um, so I... You know, I thought, well, maybe I'm going to find it. This must have, like, something that I'm... There, there must be something I'm missing here. Because this is a $350 to $375 knife. Um, I kept thinking I was going to discover some element or some thing here. Or there must have been some interesting... Because, you know, pe like, people were really surprised and uh, offended that I didn't know about this knife. It's it's cool, uh, but uh, it, it, I, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I well, I don't understand what 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 was it about this knife that I that was so offensive that I meant like why why was it so offensive that I didn't know about this? I um, it's it's great. It's cool. Uh, I just don't I don't get it. Um, I <laughs> have reviewed hundreds of knives. It seems like that are very very similar. Um, if you have this in your collection, you should be proud of it, uh, definitely. Um, but I, after having had this here and reviewed it, right, and experienced it, I just, I kind of feel like I could have continued on not knowing that it ever existed, and I really don't think it would have changed a single thing in my world. I do appreciate the people who kind of helped me understand the, the, you know, Brian Brown and the knife and the history of the knife. And, you know, I don't mean to take away from this because it is made well, it's executed properly and it's a, a good day-to-day -day tool. But I don't, having come to the end of this, I don't feel like I missed anything by not being aware of it when it was first announced. I am very confused by the heavily anticipated, like all of that. I've read that all over the place. It's such a big deal that this knife is going to be released. I'm really happy for the people who enjoy this. I don't understand. Um, but, you know, sometimes that is the way that it is. People, I get really excited about hinderer knives and people tell me, I don't get what you're so excited about, right? Um, so maybe that's just what it is here. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really sure what else to say. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, thanks so much to the gentleman who loaned this to me for review. Again, not trying to, you know, I don't, I don't want to water down this design or say that it's not deserving of any praise because it is good. Um, I, it just seems like it was a little bit overhyped. Um, but, uh, eh, you know, what are you going to do? Lots of stuff out there, right? Anyways... Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.